What's up guys? Jeremy Clark here, Phils Jackson on Twitter. And this is a quick little video on using Bookmap for the DOM and also the quotes counter, which is a really cool feature. I'm not finding it in the Jigsaw Day Trader. Uh, this is one particular column that seems to be unique to Bookmap and I'm really enjoying it. I use it a lot for finding reversals and continuations. So just going to jump right in. Over here on the left you see we've got the heat map and these big white uh, sections. These are liquidity pools, uh, probably sellers up here. These could be stop losses or take profit orders, etc. Here you've got the prices column and you can see there are market orders going through. Uh, the blue ones are on the ask. These, these would be buy orders on the ask and the white letters would be limit orders that are being triggered or filled. Uh, here you've got the the bid side depth of market. Then again you've got market orders as they're filling. So you can see we've got sellers on the bid, buyers on the ask, buyers in blue on the ask, sellers in red on the bid, buyers on the ask, buyers on the ask at 0 0.01, 0 0.34, buyers on the ask. And moving on again this is the ask side depth of market. Over here you've got notes. So these are my uh, Camarilla pivot levels and I have the uh, developing point of control marked. I'm just going to move this because it has moved to right about here and I give precedence to the volume profile point of control over the market profile. I really want to see how much volume is trading and you'll notice that it is lined up with the, the white v, VWAP line right here. I'm just going to switch over to trading, vil, trading view real quick and there we go. So here on TradingView, you can see here's my levels, S1, S2, S3, and S4. Up here, this is the 50% line for the Camarilla. And so I just like to take these lines as you know support and resistance lines and migrate them over into Bookmap, which is a really cool feature in the notes. Uh, you can see S3, S4, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I have the market profile. Um, this is the current historical data as trades have happened. This is the amount of time they spent, the number of trades uh, at time at price. Uh, 27,520 would be the point of control for the market profile. Moving over here to the volume profile it would be down um, 10 points and your uh, developing volume point of control would be at 27,510. Now moving on over to the quotes counter and this is the thing I really wanted to dive into uh, you can see the quotes counter point of control, mostly buyers at 43,310 here at 27,500. Okay, um, so this is constantly changing. This is historical data. This is trades where they've happened and the amount of volume. This is live data. So these can go up or down as prices, uh, I'm sorry, as offers are added and subtracted from the market, you will see these go up and down and sometimes if an area is getting hit you'll see a dip right here at 2691 there's a lot of buyers a lot of interest at this level this is getting eaten up and not necessarily getting added to so you can see the price is starting to come down slightly now it's now it's adding again so there's more interest coming down again coming down so that that area is shrinking now you can see there's a ton of sellers up above here 16.8, 17. Um, and this brings me to the other version of the quotes counter. So over here, this is the histogram. Over here, this is the bid side quotes counter, just the numbers and the ask side. And you can see we've got a ton of sellers um, limit orders underneath the best bid and the best ask. Uh, these are possibly stop orders or old orders that got, you know, price ran past them. They didn't get filled. This is the larger market as a whole. These are the numbers that are trying, these are the orders that are trying to get filled. Over here, these are the market maker orders that are actually queued up and ready to go. So you're gonna see more orders on the quotes counter than you're going to see on the DOM or the order books. So again, I've got the market maker, I'm sorry, the market orders as they're filling here, uh, filling limit orders. You got 0.05 buyers on the ask, 0.06 buyers on the ask. 0.01 sellers on the bid, and we'll just do one more, 0.02, 0.02 buyers on the ask. Okay, so 
notice these are constantly moving. Sometimes they're going up, sometimes they're going down. But in this situation where I see there's more sellers underneath the best bid and offer and there's none above on the bid, this tells me that price is currently in an upswing. And we just moved from about 510 to 560. Okay, so price is moving up and there's still a lot of buyers uh, willing to bid. And there's a buy side uh, vacuum up here. So people are trying to buy at the lowest price possible. And they're eating up, uh, right here you can see 15,000. You can see they're eating up, eating up um, prices as they move higher. You know, and you'll see in the reverse, if uh, price is coming down, you'll see these will disappear underneath and you'll start to see orders stacking above the bid. So that's kind of the thing I was trying to get my head around and trying to understand the difference between the quotes counter and the DOM or the order books. And uh, the conclusion I came to is that these are all the orders in this particular time slice, which is, oops, five minutes um, on the heat map over here. Um, these are historical orders as well as live orders as they're coming in. Whatever's staying on the books, whatever's coming off the books, these are the numbers. Okay, so um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to touch on. Uh, I just wanted to mention that you know, in relation to the volume point of control, which would be here, um, y you're going to see sometimes the quotes counter will mirror it and it'll look the same. Let's see if I um, drop this in a little bit. Let's change this. Okay, so that's making it smaller. So I'm, I'm adding more time is what I'm doing here. And here's a good example. So right here you can see, you know, there was a lot of um, quotes came out at this level right here and it led to price dropping and you had this really low volume area where price just dropped right through it and formed a new point of control down here. So that's a low volume node that usually indicates there's a lot of big sellers in that area and um, moving back over here we've got the point of control on the quotes counter is right around here 70,000 that's 70,000 Bitcoin that's quite a bit and looking over here, you've got 0.05 buyers on the ask. And again, you've got all of these ask orders coming in below um, below the ask price. I don't know if these are just hopeful or price already passed them by and these are late to the market. I don't, I'm not sure why these are below the best bid and, and ask, but it, it tells me that price is in an upswing. So I know how to use it. Um, and again, once this decides to flip, you'll start to see bids stacking up above here. And if they disappear from the ask and they start adding up above on the bid, then you know price is going to move the other way. As you can see, we're getting more. So again, price is still moving up. Now we're at 570. We've got the market profile uh, point of control is now at 570. So that means you know the most 280 bitcoins have traded at 27.570. And but in terms of volume, it's still down here at 27.510. This is where the most um, trades have taken place in terms of volume. This is where trades have spent the most amount of time in terms of the market profile. Price uh, has stayed here the longest, but price has traded the most volume down here. That's kind of typical of, a, of an upswing. Um, so again, looking at this top column here, you can see that this is getting added to and added to and added to. It looks like it's getting added to by mostly sellers. So these are sellers that are selling to buy orders on the bid. I'm sorry, buy orders that are moving up. Market order, market buy orders are moving up to the ask to buy. So these are buyers that are willing to pay a little bit more. And you can see them right here. These are buyers on the ask, 2.5, 0.01. These, these guys are buying higher. And again, this is getting a lot more sell orders down here. And there's no bid orders up here. So that tells me there's a lot of, there's a lot of interest underneath um, people are willing to continue paying higher and higher prices and you can see that these in this area is really important here you can see that these uh, the ask side is getting added to we've got 3700 versus 1700 on the bid uh, so there's a lot of sellers coming in but it's being absorbed so if I look underneath look at what's right under the uh, bid box 6700 versus 30, 50, and 59. So there are more buyers underneath right here pushing the price up. And again, there's there's no 
uh, um, bid offers up above here. Um, so this tells me price is in an upswing. There's a buy side vacuum or a lack of liquidity here uh, above and there's a ton of sellers that are willing to sell to these buyers. So lack of liquidity will cause price to run in that direction. That's exactly what we're seeing right here. Okay, I think that about hits everything I wanted to touch on for this video. If you like this, uh, shoot me a like and uh, feel free to send me any questions on Twitter. Again, that's at Phil's Jackson and uh, happy trading guys.